There are no facts. Who's theory? Quine. Oh, um, Quine. Oh, Quine. Tom what, what's Quine. his first name? Uh, uh, is it Thomas? No, no. No, no. that's Aquinas. Um, <laughs> Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> no, this is, oh, God. Uh, it he, doesn't matter. It anyway, doesn't matter. he had the holistic theory of language, which was that any word, no, th th there is, there, there is no, um, um, foundation of language. Yeah. In other words, there, there are no, there are no, um, th there are no atoms of language. Yes. As a relational really, there view. No, a there relational no atoms, view. Relational kind of a bootstrap. View, of but it's also like what, what um, Bertrand Russell tried to, you know, his Principia yeah. Mathematica, he yes. wanted to reduce everything to logic. Yes. It didn't work, did it? Oh, by the way, I was also reading that uh, Whitehead and uh, Russell during the contact, the, the 1952. That was one of the books uh, I had. Oh, wow. so, good for you, good. Jack. I was, I was, I was trying to read it. I was a kid. Though. Yeah, he must have been pretty smart back then. Well, but it doesn't mean I understood it, but at least I was looking. I had it. I had it in my physical possession right. from the library. But see, and that was the whole philosophers wanted to reduce, wanted to reduce mm. the reductionism. They yes, wanted, of course. Yes. Like the scientists. Logical, so atoms. Wanted, yeah, logical, logical atoms. Logical atoms, and that's led to the to the paradox leading to Gödel's theorem, you know, the set of all sets that are not members mm. of themselves, all that stuff. The yeah, it leads diagonal. to all kinds of paradoxes and recursions. Oh, and which reminds that. me, before yeah. we forget, yeah. I should mention, I do want to announce a joint scientific discovery by Dan Smith and Jack Sarfati that was made two nights ago when we were in heated debate in North Beach, walking along Columbus <laughs> Avenue and uh, screaming and yelling at each other where people were getting out of the way thinking these two homeless North Beach nuts are wandering around <laughs> and raving. <laughs> and, and we were talking about Steven Weinberg's, it was 1986, 1987, uh, using the weak anthropic principle, Steven Weinberg, Nobel Prize physicist, found that in order for carbon-based life in order for carbon-based life to exist, any kind of Einstein cosmological constant or, or zero-point dark energy uh, density could not be larger than a certain amount. Because if it was too large, the anti-gravity of the dark energy would make the universe expand too quickly and the stars couldn't form and carbon, uh, you know, organic chemistry couldn't happen. We couldn't be here. So he... He, predict, he published a paper on this back in, uh, like, 87, and as Creon Levin from NASA pointed out, also uh, Fred Hoyle had used the same kind of arguments to show a nuclear resonance, I think, in carbon, uh, was it carbon-14? Yeah. So, so yeah. that these... Uh, Triple you, alpha reaction. Uh, what, uh, that thing. So uh, the point is that this weak anthropic principle has led to interesting physical things. However, well, in this debate, I realized that there's another way to look at Weinberg's result that wine was not known to Weinberg because at the time it was, would be another 12 or 13 years before dark energy would be uh, discovered. And with that, we know he didn't have the holographic picture. He didn't have the idea that the universe is a hologram being projected backward in time from the future. Had he had that idea, he would have realized that his maximal dark energy density is also corresponds to the minimal information complexity or channel capacity needed for life to evolve. It's kind of like the uh, the threshold of complexity for the girdle recursion. Well, that's, a we were, that's now, a, we, one that of the things we're screaming about is, about is you yes. said it was maybe finite. You, you yeah. could get the Gödel's yeah. um, paradox out at the Gödel sentence. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, the fine, like and that, it, is, you know, it turns out it's true because that's, well, the, minimal, that's the minimal complexity of information on the hologram that yeah. would allow life to develop. To be it, recursive. To and, be recursive. And, yeah. and beyond that, of course, you have infinite complexity if you want. But we don't know when, and we didn't, we weren't able to decide between us whether that, that minimal good old thing was finite or infinite. No, 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 we did. That Once I realized that we were talking about well, the wrong, see, but you, you, I'm not, I had, I had to real, no, no, we did. We had to realize that, yeah. that, that, that the information capacity is the reciprocal of the dark energy density. See, that's the hologram principle. And once you have that, then what Weinberg's limit, Weinberg's bound, is a minimal bound on the information complexity uh, or the channel capacity of the mind of God, so to speak, to create life. That's, so it's necessary. 
It's absolutely necessary. Maybe and it's point, not sufficient to well, get I, Gödel's theorem. Well, to me, maybe I, it's not. I, well, maybe, maybe, but to you me, haven't it, proven it. No, of course not. But well, this is, all right. No, then, no, wait a minute. What physicists are, are not ten you guys? No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying no. But no, from a physics point of view, it's extremely plausible, and we only go by plausibility. Remember what Einstein said about uh, to the extent that something is certain, it's not physics. To the extent that it's physics, it's not certain. So there's yeah, a difference yeah. between mathematical pr yeah. theorems and close physics. Close enough for all practical. Purposes. Close enough for all practical. That's it. <laughs> you got it. Close enough to the to the to the muse to Sophia. Okay. I, I mean, all right. But let's let, let yeah. let's go on. Well, speaking well, of on. which, we got it. And then we got into the zipper problem. Speaking okay, of go into the zipper. Enough. Yeah. Go 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 ahead. Talk and about, about the, the bodice ripper and uh, well, versus the the zipper. Well, person. go ahead. You better explain that before people well, think you're totally Well, nuts. that that the Christians <laughs> want want or want a bodice ripper. They want God to come in and just sweep them off their feet. The the the, uh, the, the uh, rapture. The rapture. The second coming. Thing. The they body. The return of the body. They don't want to have to you know have to work. They don't want to have to think about it. They don't want to have, to, especially they don't want to have to you know. They want to be passively taken, like a uh, 19th century heroine I mean, well, in a yeah, I mean, Gothic novel. As, as, yeah, as long as, long as, as they follow the Ten Commandments, yeah. then that's all they have to worry about. But, of course, no Christian has ever followed the Ten Commandments, so they should be worried because they haven't, you know, I mean, uh, well, they think they've been born again, and I'm saying may, maybe they're going to have to be born again again, and they're going to have to... Work at it. Where's Marshall Nafee? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that we may have to, you know, there may be a zipper is, is part of this rapture thing. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, like a zipper is. It's, kind it's, of, it's baby two, steps. You, you know, about, but you also about the two pieces, the initial pieces are like the uh, physics and the metaphysics coming. The physics and the metaphysics. The, coming together. Um, the uh, yin and the yang and... Yeah, you name it. There, there's always this kind of duality, or good and evil, even. Mm -hmm. God forbid. And um, or science and religion, yes. science and religion, yes. and and we don't even know if we're trying to zip this up or trying to unzip it. Now I'm saying like, in the in the the if it, you're just like Joe Friday, just the facts, ma'am. It's like you know, it's unzipped and and. And um, everything's out there, but if you're in the coherent theory, like like uh, mm, Willard O. Quine, mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, well, you, you have to you're trying to zip it up in, into something that is you know interlocking. You want a coherent narrative, a coherent narrative. But you're also saying something about uh, remember we were talking about Robert Dixon Crane, uh, mm. uh, who was the first Islamic uh, army chaplain and. Uh, Mm. Uh, was a, also personal advisor to Richard Nixon, uh, talking about how uh, wanting to bring together Christianity and Islam and Judaism in mm. this new synthesis. Okay, and then um, and you were saying in the Second Coming, the Mahdi of Ahmadinejad and Tehran mm. and Jesus are all coming together. That was the Tawhid. The Tawhid. Yeah, you remember Tawhid. Tawhid well, cybernetics. The Tawhid, Tawhid cybernetics. Tawhid See, he was there. He remembers. Islamic, he remembers, fun, is Islamic uh, cosmological principle that means from future to past. Yeah. See, you know, that's what. Really? And, yes, yes. That's what Crane, really? who's an Islamic scholar, talked uh, to Marvin Minsky and Herman Kahn. Yeah. This is back in 1980 when I was dating his daughter. Mighty Crane and Kim met, was there the as a Tau witness. I've never heard. Tawhid and, and, and even back then, in the late 70s and early 80s, I was talking about the future to the past. I didn't know about right. dark energy. Oh, Islamic, co Islamic cosmology is very interesting. Very interesting. Has, uh, and and it, was, it, was, it was Crane well, it's, it's, who said this, who it's pointed probably, this out. It's Sufi. It's probably more. Yes, like it is. Sufi. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. The Sufis were the real cosmologists in, yeah, in right. Islam. Yeah, Sufis. Which is sort so of like, like they had their own kind of Kabbalah. Yeah, well, okay, so it turns, it turns thing. out that yeah. the ideas, oh, by the way, these ideas of my future to the past are already in the 1973 tape that's on the internet mm. of mm. me talking with Hal Putoff, Russell Todd, Brendan Reagan, Dean Brown, and other people during the Uri Geller, uh, you know, the CIA-sponsored remote viewing SRI. test, the SRI, so. back right before I went to Europe and helped arrange the tests of Geller at the University of London. And a lot of these ideas in very primitive form are discussed there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, so it's all yeah. on record. It's all on yeah. record. Yeah. But, and this is all before 
the dark energy was discovered in 1999. So it's all like a continuous, right. uh, coherent narrative there, you might say. Well, go ahead. 